This show is proudly sponsored by TraderCobb.com, the leaders in checklist-based trading strategy. Yes, that's exactly how it sounds. I'll teach you a literal checklist so you can tick off items and be decisive very quickly. Get across to TraderCobb.com where there's a bunch of free content there for you to have a look at. And of course, if you're interested in having me come to your city, click and register for the live events coming up and filling fast. Have a great day. Visit TraderCobb.com now. The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. Today's guest, it's the first, a first for the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. I have actually got a sir. Sir John Hargrave, the CEO of Media Shower and author of Blockchain for Everyone, is joining us from Boston. Thank you for your time. Craig, this is going to be the greatest episode of Trader Cobb ever, I think. What, how do I, what do I have to do? Do I, do I, do I bow? Do I curtsy? Do I, what, what do I do? <laughs> We're all good. You can just call me John or Sir John if you want to be formal. <laughs> all right. I like it. Well, look, we've got a great story from you. I want to get through what you've come from, what you've got into, why you're doing what you're doing. And also, obviously, we're going to touch on the book and what is inside of that. But first of all, do you want to just tell us a little bit about, I guess, your background and, and what brought you into this space? Because everyone's got their rabbit hole moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I started as a comedy writer and uh, I worked for a media company. It was called Ziff Davis back in the day during the uh, dot-com revolution, 1999, 2000. We built one of the very first technology websites. It's called ZDNet, still around today. Wow. And uh, I became known as sort of the funny tech writer. So I kind of fused this comedy writing with my love of technology and I became the guy who could explain technology in plain English with jokes. And uh, that became my shtick. That was my thing. And uh, I've written several books. My latest book, Blockchain for Everyone, is one that explains blockchain in a very user-friendly, accessible, funny way, wrapped up in a great story. But uh, in the, one of the first chapters, I talk about how I went down the rabbit hole. And it basically started when I uh, bought Bitcoin uh, from a, uh, a trading exchange in Belarus. I had no idea where I was sending my money or whether I would ever see it again. As you arrived. Had to, make, had, to, had to make a bank transfer, a wire transfer, I had to send them my driver's license. Wow. And uh, let me just say, you kids today have no idea how easy it is to buy Bitcoin compared to what we had to go through. Yeah, buy more. Yeah. So uh, it was, it did work out though very well for me. I think I bought in when it was about $125. And uh, we eventually took this media company that I had built called Media Shower and we went all in on blockchain. So that is what we do today is we're a blockchain media company and we focus exclusively uh, in this space because it's the most exciting space in technology to be working in. I will tip my hat to you and I will totally agree with you. Now, I've got a question. You talked about uh, you were sort of around those dot-com days, the heady heights yeah. of the dot-com boom, of course, in year 2000, before we saw it tumble back to the ground. Now, I've got a question around the demographic of people because there is uh, a lot of young people that have sort of kicked off and, and visionaries and, and, you know, like um, pe people that are millennials that are very much uh, impatient, want instant gratification, which Bitcoin, you know, suits very, very well. I believe that the next bull run, the market that we're seeing coming back now, I believe we're going to see a lot more between sort of the ages of 40 and 65. And here's my reasoning as to why. They don't want to buy the top. They don't want to buy the bottom. They don't want to buy brand new technology because they don't quite understand it. They haven't got time to understand it. But when it comes back, like think 1996 when the crash came back. Think 2000, which yeah. was a big one, crashed and came back. Now we've got Amazon. We've got, I know Facebook's a little bit further outside of that, that, uh, that range there, but we've got I think out of the top five market capitalization companies in the world, only three of them are tech companies now. So this demographic understands very well that, um, you know, from, from, from the ashes of Phoenix can rise. And we're starting to see that again. Now, you've been through that in those dot-com days, building websites and being involved in that period. 
Are you seeing yeah. more of, I guess, that generation finding a lot more interest in this space? And is that what the book is for? Yeah, so it's interesting, the parallels, the dot-com days, uh, you know, just like the kind of crypto rise of uh, mm. 2017, we saw this irrational exuberance and then we saw a crash. Yep. But then remember, in the dot-com, there was a long, slow rise and the most powerful companies today, the Amazons and Googles of today, were formed in that initial excitement, that initial five-year period between 1995 and 2000. So that's what we're seeing now. The most powerful companies of tomorrow are being built today in blockchain. Now, the people who are investing in them are very interesting because we have a, uh, uh, an investor publication called Bitcoin Market Journal, and we reach about 100,000 blockchain investors per month. And we do a lot of events where we uh, meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. And what we found is they're all over the map. So they're all different ages. They're male and female. You have retired professionals, you have work from home moms, you have hedge fund managers, college students, everybody. Mm. But they have certain characteristics in uh, common. They're early adopters, right? They're tech friendly. They, they understand how to use technology and they're lifelong learners. So they're really eager to learn new things. And I think you probably see the same thing with, yeah. you know, the people listening to this show, right? They're early adopters, they're tech lovers, and they're lifelong learners. That's why they're listening to you. Those are the, that's the profile of the blockchain investor. Perfect. Well, that's sort of fits the same sort of thing I'm thinking along the lines of here, because we do need to see obviously more money to come in. Now, I want to go through a little bit more of the fun side of your journey. Uh, and the book itself, because obviously, I mean, clearly it's, it's the perfect and most, you know, obvious journey into the blockchain space being a comedy, right? I mean, who, who wouldn't suspect that to be real? So what <laughs> Chris, things... who, who wouldn't consider a background in comedy writing the prerequisite <laughs> for rewriting the global economy? Yes, exactly. 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 So you got some funny stories in this book. Come on. Give us some good ones. Tell me. Give us some gold. Give us a good one. Oh, there's so many. Uh, there was one where uh, we are pitching various clients on various blockchain projects during the, the heyday of 2017. So remember, ICOs are all the rage, new tokens. You can mint money just by creating a, a new blockchain mm. project. And we're contacted by the owners of a Polish energy drink company. So uh, kind of like Red Bull, but Polish. And the idea is that we will have a, a token baked into the can. So the can is the coin. The can is the coin. So every time you buy the can, you get a can of the Polish industry, you can scan the code, get a token, and that token can be redeemed on digital exchanges. So they say, well, we want you to come out to Poland to pitch this to the team. So I fly to Warsaw, fly to Poland, go to only to find out that the CEO is not there. The, C the CEO is in Singapore. The CEO, let me just, let, the CEO is in Singapore and wants to Skype in to the meeting that I have flown to Poland to go for. And I am greeted, uh, not with a Red Bull sort of uh, bubbly team, but with a dour faced set of executives who could care less about blockchain. <laughs> they have no idea what I'm talking about at all. So that is the kind of uh, grind that we've all had oh over the last year as we've tried to explain this new technology to people. And you'll have some folks who are super exuberant like the CEO, yeah. but are who have been in Singapore. That's um, an extraordinary waste of time. So well done there. Um, <laughs> did you get the deal done? Uh, we, we got it to a certain point, but let's just leave it at that. You can read <laughs> it. Story in the You're not allowed to go back to Poland anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to make half a million dollars if they find you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um, look, we've all got some strange stories. And look, let me tell you, you know, when you walk around consent, I wasn't in a consensus this year, I was a consensus the year before. And I mean, my goodness, it was just an absolute boiling pot of, uh, interesting people, uh, egos and attention seeking uh, was what I sort of took away from that. I spent the, uh, the grand total of two hours running around on the camera team getting footage there. And that was about it. 
it was just so intense. I mean, I saw a dude who had like all these weird, I think like, I don't know, late 80s punk sort of glam stuff on. Then he had a Pokemon on his shoulder. He had a rainbow mohawk. And I'm going, I'm not quite sure what that is. Like, what, 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 what is <laughs> there, there's it's a luck. A very large education to be had at many of these events. And it's not just about blockchain. Um, yeah. That's, that's the beauty of the space. There's a lot of different walks of life. Well, that is kind of what's fun about it also is that you have this colorful cast of characters. And I really try to capture that in the book, just the wide assortment of, of freaks and geeks that are in this space. And what's interesting about it is it really is a new discipline because it combines the traditional finance world with technology. Mm. So I, I talk about in one uh, early blockchain conference, uh, Token Summit, where I sneak into the room because I couldn't get a ticket. The tickets were completely sold out. So I snuck into the room and pretended I was part of the sound crew. And uh, <laughs> as I'm sitting there looking around, I'm seeing that half of the attendees are wearing suits, like Walt, you know, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, yep. and half are wearing hoodies. Yep. Because they're the geeks, right? And so you've got this weird mashup of suits and hoodies. You've got like cryptography freaks. I mean, you've got all this, this melting pot of, of just assorted characters. And what's happening is this is slowly kind of boiling down into a new discipline, the discipline yeah. of tokenomics, the discipline of crypto investing, which yeah. you're leading. Right? And that is what's exciting is to be on the, uh, the leading edge of that. We're really pioneers at this point. We're like the first explorers in a new country and my, my my book is really a map to help people understand what this new territory is all about well speaking of the analogy of it being a map if we yeah. are going to talk about it being a map there needs to be a start and there needs to be a destination so how does this book start what do you touch on to try and help people to because i mean when you pick up a book right um you pick up a book and often if i read a book i will when i start reading it i'll read it all the way to the end because i'm stubborn right I, if I decide I'm going to buy, I'm reading the whole bloody thing. But you can often, like, often a book you go, oh, geez, it took a little while to get, get into. I like yeah. a book when I open it, I hit it and I go, wham, that's what I love. That's what I'm enjoying. So, so how does this book start? Like, what's your first focal point to help? Because obviously there's going to be some comedy in there that you're going to take us on a journey. But what, and you're going to teach you some stuff. Where do you start to make that bang? Yeah, good, great question. So the very first chapter opens with me becoming a millionaire. The book opens in 1999. Our, our uh, company, this media company I've worked for has just gone public on the New York Stock Exchange. We all have stock options. Huh. It's my 30th birthday. I'm riding in a limousine and I just have become a millionaire. This really happened. And it's a snapshot of this point in time where, again, the hype around this technology was so high and there was so much excitement, so much of a bubble around dot coms that it was very easy to get rich. And what I do throughout the book is show the parallel of what's happened through 2016, 2017 to the beginning of 2018 where the bubble popped, right? And then we went into this long, slow crypto winter and how we came out the other side and how smart investors, just like smart investors in the dot-com space, saw the popping of that bubble, not as the end, but as the beginning, beginning, right? As the beginning of somewhere that we can now find companies with real value and start to help them grow. Smart investors in the blockchain space saw the same thing. They saw, okay, now that we're in crypto winter, this is the time to buy. Warren Buffett talks about value investing as just being, look for good companies whose stock is on sale right? That's value investing. And that is the same philosophy that we espouse in the book, which is look for good blockchain companies, good tokens, good investments that are on sale, that are cheap relative to the price they were before the bubble and buy them then when the rest of the market has, you know, all the air has let out and people have fled for the exit. That's the time to buy. Well, that's a great introduction to a book. So thank you. I really like that. You're going to have to send me a copy um, because it like, that's a great, I just want to know that story now. I really do. I want to know that story. I want to read that first chapter and then I'm going to get sucked into the rest of it. You start talk about, you know, buying good value propositions, good value companies at a discount. Now we all want to do that. The old saying of buy low, sell high. Uh, obviously I'm a yeah. trader so I can go long and short, not on everything. Of course, it's only if there's margin products available. So 
2018 was pretty sweet for me. We, we did quite well because we got some very good shorts on. But when it comes to value investing, we're, we're a new paradigm here because these are not public companies. I, I can't go in and see everything from within uh, as, as to how it's working. So how do we perceive good value within a blockchain company, within a token? Craig, it's like you're reading from the book right now. These are the questions that we ask and we wrap it up within my personal story. So as I'm having poker with my friends, I have a friend who's across the table and he's a traditional value investor, my friend Ben, and he's very skeptical about blockchain and he's saying, what gives these things their value? You don't have earnings per share. You don't, you don't have you know, book to earning ratio. I don't have any of these metrics. And we're trying to figure it out together. What are the new metrics to value this new yeah. asset class? And this book tells the story of my journey in a very entertaining way of getting to what are ultimately our fundamentals for measuring blockchain without giving too much away. It comes down to people. So it comes down to the number of users yeah. that you have on a blockchain, right? And this makes sense. This is like, the number of people on your blockchain is similar to the number of uh, customers it, that, that a company might have or number of users with like a network. A, like a social media. Yes, exactly. And on Twitter or, mm. or Telegram, right? So that is one very important metric we can look at because of network effects, because of Metcalf's law, that the more people you have, it actually grows more and more valuable, the network or the blockchain does for everybody who joins with that. That's why network companies like Tencent and Facebook are valued so highly yeah. on the traditional side. And if we can measure the number of people or the number of users on a blockchain, we can get a very good sense of valuation. That makes sense. And I'm glad that you said that because I will be reading the book and I will find out more detail. But um, what it also does is sort of, that, that's one of the things that I've considered as well. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't have a fundamentals course. Uh, we, we've got experts that are writing one at the moment because that's what we're good at we're good at putting things together and as you say with your book good at putting things together in a way that's easy to understand i'm, I'm just this ball-headed australian guy but i know how to make things simplified because shit i gotta do it myself to make it work right so um very, very interesting to hear you on the same path along the lines as that as well now i want to know when does the book actually come out like, when when does this hit the shelves so to speak and how do we find it yeah, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, uh, August 6th, and uh, we uh, will be available on Amazon.com. There will be a global edition available for Australians, cool. a little bit different from the American uh, edition, and then we'll also have, uh, of course, a Kindle ebook. And the audiobook deserves a special mention. Uh, we spent about 400 hours putting together the audiobook. Uh, so, for listeners of your podcast, you'll really enjoy it. It's a totally different experience. Uh, there's just a ton of additional bonus content that we included uh, that we could do in audio that we couldn't do in print, and vice versa. They're really two totally different products. So, check out audible.com or wherever. Uh, your favorite eBooks are sold. Audible. Excellent. That makes me happy because it means that I can be in absorbing information while I'm on the move. And that's what I always yeah. do because you know what it's like, man, when you come into this space, Oh, it is full on. There is so much going on. There's a reason my voice sounds like this. After two days of speaking on stage here in Sydney, I've only just crept out from underneath my rock. Uh, you're the first interview I've done. I had to cancel the other ones because I literally had no voice the last few days. <laughs> you, know, you know what I found, Craig? Because I, I spent so long doing this audio book that you got to really take care of your voice. People don't appreciate, like, when you are talking with real force and power, it, it takes a toll. You know what I did? I did the steam. You do the steam? You steam. I have done. I, I, I didn't do it. I do tea throughout. So I'm always sipping tea to keep them nice and moist. I heard tea works too, yes. Tea yes. with, with good natural honey. Uh, and gal, uh, not garlic, uh, ginger. I find that soothes, soothes, soothes. The tea and honey, that's interesting because I know some folks who were uh, in the dramatic arts and the theater and they said, yeah, try tea with honey. But I did the steam and I found that really helped sort of keep my voice fresh through the 400 hours we spent <laughs> on this audio. <laughs> You're quite right though. I mean, there, there's there's talking, there's talking like we're talking now and then there's, there's talking where you, 
mean, this is a podcast mostly, and you know, people have got to—they got to feel your voice. They've got to connect with your voice. So it's—it's it's different to when you're just sitting down, you know, having a chat with your mate. You've got to get the message across, and it is a big, big, big strain on your voice. The Audible book—I can't wait to get my hands on that. Will that also be on on Tuesday, the sixth of August, as well? Is that the date? Yeah, yeah, Tuesday, August sixth, and again, we have a global edition, and the global edition is the one that um, that your Australian listeners should listen to. But of course, uh, both are, are really terrific. Both the uh, U.S. version and the and the global version on Audible or wherever you get your audiobooks. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a first for us today. We are amongst a sir. It is Sir John Hargrave, the CEO of Media Show and the author, obviously, of Blockchain for Everybody, being released on Amazon and Audible on the sixth of August. 2019 more history being made in the month of august john it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you i wish you all the best of luck with the launch and i look forward to getting my hands on it craig thank you so much keep up the excellent work everybody have a fantastic day bye for now this show is proudly sponsored by tradercob.com the leaders in checklist based trading strategy yes that's exactly how it sounds i'll teach you a literal checklist so you can tick off items and be decisive very quickly. Get across to tradercob.com where there's a bunch of free content there for you to have a look at. And of course, if you're interested in having me come to your city, click and register for the live events coming up and filling fast. Have a great day. Visit tradercob.com now.